Hello, welcome to AP Sources Simplified. Today we're looking at two sources that go together. The first is Franklin Roosevelt's Executive Order 9066, which led to the internment of Japanese Americans. And the second document is Korematsu v. the United States, which is the Supreme Court case that challenged the Executive Order 9066. Before getting into the documents, let's take a look at the context. Before the United States entered World War II, it had been raging for several years in different parts of the world. In Europe, the war began when Germany invaded Poland in September of 1939. Eventually, Germany and Italy would be at war with France, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union. On the other side of the world, in East Asia, the war had been going on for even longer, as the Japanese Empire had invaded Korea, China, and had taken many islands across the Western Pacific. The Japanese Empire was getting closer to American possessions. The relations between the two countries were not good, as America protested Japanese aggression and cut Japan off from trade. And on December 7, 1941, a date that will live in infamy, Japan launched a massive surprise attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, resulting in the loss of many U.S. naval ships and thousands of military personnel. The next day, the U.S. officially joined the war. While the U.S. geared up for total war, there were questions about defense of the home front. On the West Coast resided a significant amount of Japanese Americans. This group had already endured decades of racism and segregation in California, but now there was an increased fervor against them, which did result in incidents of violence by civilians. The government had studied what may happen with that immigrant group if war broke out against Japan, and the reports concluded that Japanese Americans were loyal. However, these reports were ignored. Both President Roosevelt's civilian and military advisors argued in favor of interning Japanese Americans as, mili as a military necessity, as they worried about spying and espionage. So it was ordered that Japanese Americans, along with several thousand Germans and Italians, were to be relocated and interned at camps far from their homes. Many of them were full American citizens. Some were second and third generation Americans. They would lose their livelihoods, homes, businesses, and rights. Now taking a look at the key points of Executive Order 9066. First, the order starts off with its purpose, quote, whereas the successful prosecution of the war requires every possible protection against espionage and against sabotage. The rest of the order gives directions to the Secretary of War, including to set up restricted military areas for detained people. And military personnel will carry out the order with help from state and local agencies. The military will also furnish the areas with food, clothing, supplies, and the like. The order does not mention specific groups of people, but the intentions were clear in meetings between the president and his advisors that it was meant for Japanese Americans along the West Coast and some Germans and Italians. Now let's take a look at Korematsu versus the United States, which would challenge the executive order. First, a little background on Korematsu. He was a young man that kind of ended up in this Supreme Court case by accident. Korematsu was not thinking about protesting the taking away of his rights when he did not comply with the order. He just did not want to leave his girlfriend. When Korematsu was approached with the opportunity to make this a civil rights test case, he did see the wider picture and agreed. There is much more to the fascinating story of Fred Korematsu, and if interested, check out Radio Lab's More Perfect podcast, which has a whole episode on Fred Korematsu and this case. The big question in the case for the Supreme Court was, did the president and Congress go beyond their war powers? And the Supreme Court would find they did not go beyond their powers and ruled six to three in favor of the legality of Executive Order 9066. The majority opinion written by Justice Black stated that the government did not show racial prejudice and said it was a strategic imperative. The opinion also said that the order was on even more solid ground because Congress had validated it. However, three judges did dissent in the case, with Justice, Jack Justice Jackson writing that it violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Moving on to who would agree and disagree with the order and the Supreme Court ruling, most Americans who were not affected by the internment agreed with it. It is important to keep in mind the shock of Pearl Harbor and the hatred of Japanese many Americans felt during the war. This was also fueled by anti-Japanese propaganda in posters, films, and even children's cartoons. 
After the war concluded, a more sober analysis of internment took forth in the subsequent decades. Its legacy became a hotly debated topic in the arenas of civil rights and governmental powers. In 1976, President Ford officially apologized for the internment, and in 1988, Congress passed and President Reagan signed a bill of reparations for the internment survivors. Taking a look at connections across time periods, for a push, there is a connection to the executive order and ruling to previous instances when civil rights were taken away during times of strife, the first being the Alien Sedition Act during the troubles of the Adams administration with the French and pesky political rivals. Another time is when Lincoln suspended habeas corpus and jailed Confederates and Confederate sympathizers without trial. And another time during World War I with the Espionage and Sedition Acts were passed which curbed free speech. And finally, the Patriot Act of 2001, following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, which expanded police and surveillance powers of the U.S. government. On a final note, the Supreme Court recently overturned Korematsu v. United States in its Trump v. Hawaii ruling. There is much more to that ruling, but for now, we'll leave that for another video much further down the road. Okay, that does it for Executive Order 9066 in Korematsu v. United States. If you liked the video, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends.